I just bought a bike online, vintage motorbike, sight unseen, that has been sitting in a barn for the last 30 years with a heck of a lot of dodgy modifications. It's probably the ugliest bike on the internet. So the bike appears to be someone's interpretation of a bobber or a chopper. What could possibly go wrong? Five, four, three, two, one. Old school only is go. <laughs> <laughs> So the good points, there are good points. It's a bike I've always wanted. Actually, I used to own one that I never finished, mainly because that one was absolutely flogged out. Also, I bought the bike from a motorcycle dealer, not Jack Sparrow, and I have seen it running, a video of it running. It's um, first and only startup that I know of for decades. And the bit that I like about this bike only the fact that I've always wanted one, it needs work. And if you're familiar with this channel, I like a challenge, I like a project. I'm not in the stock. What you might not know is I have built plenty of motorbikes. You've seen my mini bikes and mucking around that kind of stuff, but I've actually built some pretty cool custom motorcycles in my time. And I've been missing it. The only, well, the other downside to this purchase is the bike is in Melbourne. I'm in Sydney, it's a few days before New Year's, everyone's on holidays, and the transport company can't deliver it until the end of January. So I've got what, 30 days or so before it arrives, which is gonna be super frustrating. And unfortunately, due to everything that's going on at the moment, I can't just go for a road trip down there and pick it up. <sighs> anyway, 30 days, it's gonna be a long 30 days. Alrighty, the moment has come. Let me introduce to you the ugliest motorcycle on the internet. Check out that rack. Mm. And if you're wondering what it is, it's a 1942 War Department BSA WM20. That's been modified. Civilianized, turned into a chopper once upon a time. Here's a pic of what one would have looked like when they were made. So this thing's just arrived. I haven't really had a chance to have a look at it. I've walked around it. So what I can tell on this bike, um, it's an original engine, gearbox, oil tank's been chromed. It's an original fuel tank that's been painted black. Um, original seat. Rear guard's not original, the rack's not original, obviously. The frame's original. The front forks have been replaced. It's got a 21 inch front wheel, which isn't original. Looks like it's got an original style, original-ish rear wheel on it, which is a 19 inch that has been chromed a long time ago. The foot pegs, the original foot pegs were removed and it has been fitted with some highway pegs, kind of forward control-ish, but the gear change has not been moved. And it's got a forward control style rear brake lever and a side stand fitted to it down there. Now this is where things get real ugly, apart from the nice chrome primary cover. Um, what is all this you ask? Let me explain. These old bikes had a generator and a magneto. The magneto was there for the spark the generator was there to charge the battery, which ran the lights and the other bits and pieces. Um, this looks like it's got a standalone magneto, and the original one is no longer there because the original one had a spot on top for the generator. This one has had a car alternator fitted to it. 
probably super reliable but that cover hides it and the belt that they've put into the primary cover and then over here is where the battery would normally be I don't know what's behind there I'm gonna guess there's no battery there might be I don't know but what am I gonna do with this setup I'm not sure yet we'll see definitely gonna be losing this stuff it's ugly so up in the controls it's just ugly it's got a flat set of bars it's got cool old-school bobber grips on it little what, five inch headlight doesn't have decomp lever doesn't have advanced lever doesn't have a choke lever so we'll have to work out what's going on there the rear guard is a flat fender aftermarket guard I have an original guard on the way and speaking of which let me tell you the plan for this bike it is not staying like this at all absolutely no chance I scored myself an original set of BSA girder forks they're not Indian copies I've seen some horrific stories on the Indian ones I would recommend you don't buy them just YouTube it you'll see so original forks I'm gonna try and run that front wheel still um, I'm just gonna have to modify the axle but we'll get to that I'm definitely losing that Dunlop for something old school and here I've got some pie cut style early tires 400 by 19 for the rear I go on the back that'll look good for an original look we've got original bars and style bars they're chrome um, that will bolt straight on I'm gonna run an original Lucas style tail light or mount that somewhere um, for the headlight I have an original headlight bezel with the voltmeter what I was thinking of doing I don't know if this headlight's too small for it but getting rid of all this stuff running that on there or just the switch so we got on and off and have a little bit more original I've got a few stickers for it and I have an original transfer kit coming too so anyway I'm gonna try and start it up I did have a quick look in the tank just a second ago and um, it's not terrible but it smells and I might do a bit of cleaning out before I go and put fuel in that so I'll just run an auxiliary tank to get it going for now I think righto wish me luck I'm nervous I think it's flooded at the moment but I've got my right leg is bung and I think I'm gonna bung my left leg doing this so yeah you can understand my precautions I've got I've got issues with my legs anyway let's see what happens take two
All right, let me explain why this thing is so hard to start. These bikes were designed to have a decompressor. So down here, it's got an exhaust valve lever, which acts as a decompressor and a kill switch. It's not there. And it's connected to a lever normally that's up on the handlebars, which isn't there. The other thing is they have a manual ignition advance and retard lever to adjust the magneto, which isn't there. So I can't adjust the magneto so it starts easy without backfiring so much and I can't use a decompressor. Add to that, it hasn't really been used for who knows how many years, um, even though it, well, it has run before. It's just a little bit more difficult and with my legs, my right leg being how it is, using my left leg isn't my strong leg, but I'm stubborn, we'll get there, let's do it. One thing for sure, that big old 500 has got some compression. <laughs> oh. Backwards. <laughs> <laughs> 